If you close your eyes. Yes. And a uh, hundred years ago, 1922, and you think about the future, I wonder if you can hear the drums of war uh, predicting the 30s, predicting the Great Depression and the resentment that builds uh, the economic resentment, the cultural resentment, the geopolitical resentment that builds at least the World War II. It, uh, at least to me, when I close my eyes, I can hear the drums of war that are still ahead of us. And it's possible that we're there, <laughs> 2022 will materialize in a similar way as did 1922. I have my eyes closed, Lex. Do you hear anything? Do and I see? sure hope that that's not what happens. <laughs> but I'm looking in 1922, it's an epoch I know well, and I don't see the future that unfolds. I would not have predicted it had I been alive then. I see the war behind us. I see a prosperity on the horizon. Yes, inflation in Germany and, and some many other uh, difficult issues, but there are more democracies now than there were before the war and the old empires are gone and there's a cultural efflorescence and there's modernism in the arts and and there's women entering the public sphere and there's all this fantastic new technology like automobiles and yeah. I'm looking at the future from 1922 and and I'm not seeing the Great Depression and I'm not seeing World War II and I'm not seeing the Holocaust uh, because I don't predict the future and nobody in 1922 could see that future, although I guess there were some clairvoyants who predicted it, but. But you're not one of them. Yeah, I'm not one of them, and, and but, but this is what I know, Lex, from studying history. What I know is stuff happens. <laughs> in other words. That's a very deep insight. Okay. In other words, stuff Lex, happens. we're watching Ukraine war right now and all of our attention is focused on that. And it's like the economists say in their textbooks when their, their powerful models are employed. And there's this line that says, all other factors held constant, comma, and then the model works. Mm -hmm. And you get this really great result. It's very powerful predictor and, and analysis, the model. And, and the whole game is all other factors held constant. So the Russia-Ukraine war that we've been discussing, and this could happen and that could happen, but you know what stuff could happen, Lex? For example, the Israeli government could decide this summer that it's going to bomb Iran because no Israeli government will tolerate Iran acquiring a nuclear weapon. And since President Trump exited, unilaterally exited from the, the multi-power nuclear agreement, Iran is now much closer to the bomb than they were when they were still in, when the United States was still in that agreement. And you tell me the Israeli government that says, sure, it's fine, it's okay, Iran can get the bomb. And so maybe that happens. And maybe that happens as early as this summer as Iran gets closer and closer and closer. To the bomb. Maybe th that guy in North Korea decides it's his time, just like his grandfather, right, in 1950 decided, you know, it's time, we're going to, quote, reunify, unquote, the Korean Peninsula. Maybe, I don't know, Lex, fill in the blank. Something's going to happen. It's not going to be what I predict. It's not going to be what I'm watching. It's going to be obvious only after it happens, not before. And then it's going to upend the table. And all of a sudden, Everything changes. We're going to be in a different environment, different circumstances. And is Ukraine still as central at that point as it seems to be right now? Yeah. I don't know the answer to that question.